And this is Dalia again. And I'm reading The Vampire Diaries, The Awakening. And I'm going on to chapter 14. And this will be part one. Elena felt her flush creep at the words. You don't mean that, she said shakily. You remembered what she had seen on the roof. She remembered what she had seen on the roof. The blood smeared on Stefan's lips, and she forced herself not to recoil from him. Stefan, I know you. You couldn't have killed, done that. He ignored her protestation protestations I just went on staring with eyes that burned like the green ice at the bottom of a glacier he was looking through her into some incomprehensible distance as I lay in bed that night I hoped against hope that she would come already I was noticing some of the changes in myself I could see better in the dark it seemed I could hear better I felt stronger than ever before, full of some elemental energy, and I was hungry. It was a hunger I had never imagined. At dinner, I found that ordinary food and drink did nothing to satisfy it. I couldn't understand that, and then I saw the white neck of one of the serving girls. And I knew why. He drew a long breath, his eyes dark and tortured. That night, I resisted the need, though it took all my will. I was thinking of Catherine and praying she would come to me praying. He gave a short laugh. If a creature like me can pray, Elena's fingers were numb. Elena's fingers were numb with his grasp, but she tried to tighten them to send him reassurance. Go on, Stefan. He had no trouble speaking now. He seemed almost to have forgotten her presence, as if he were telling the story to himself. The next morning, the need was stronger. It was as if my own veins were dry and cracked, desperate for moisture. I knew that I couldn't stand it for long. I went for Catherine's chambers. I meant to ask her to plead with her. His voice cracked. He paused and then went on. But Damon was there already, waiting outside her rooms. I could see that he had resisted the need. The glow of his skin, the spring in his step, told me that. He looked as smug as the cat who'd, who's had the cream. But he hadn't had Catherine. Knock all you like, he said to me, but the female dragon inside won't let you pass. I've already tried. Shall we overpower her, you and I? I couldn't answer him. The look on his face, that sly, self-satisfied look, repelled me. I pounded on that door to wake. He faltered and then gave another humorless laugh. I was going to say to wake the dead, but the dead aren't so hard to wake after all, are they? After a moment, he went on. The maid, Gudrun, opened the door. She had a face like a flat white plate and eyes like black glass. I asked her if I could see her mistress. I expected to be told that Catherine was asleep. But instead, Gautrin just looked at me, then at Damon, and over my shoulder. I would not tell him. She said at last, but I will tell you. My lady Catherine, Ka Katerina is not within. She went out early this morning to walk in the garden. She said she had much need of thought. I was surprised. Early this morning, I said? Yes, she replied. She looked at both Damon and me without liking my mistress was very unhappy last night, she said meaningfully. All night long she wept. Hmm. Okay, so we'll leave it at that and we'll continue on.